Putin has given an order to cease fire from January 6th until January 7th, but it might not be as easy as it seems. At the same time, there is a chance that Wagner military company will pull its forces from Bakhmut, and today I'll explain you the significance of this event. And finally, somewhere in February or March of this year, there might be a huge escalation, and reportedly Russians already bring their nuclear weapons to Belarus and Crimea. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's go straight to the point and see some most recent footage. And first of all, in this picture, we can see Russians who are trying to hide their military vehicles by these trucks carrying wood. But spoiler alert, it did not help. And in fact, the wood made it burn even easier. Next we go to the city of Askai, located in Rostov region, Russia. And as you can see from this picture, a Ukrainian drone shark was found lying in the field. There are no signs of this drone being intercepted or even destroyed, and it has been found more than 200 kilometers away from the front lines, which basically means most likely this was a reconnaissance drone. Our next stop brings us all the way to the north to another Russian city, St. Petersburg where today a tractor factory called Belarus Tractor Works has been caught on fire. And then going back down all the way to the south, we have a picture from Odessa, where the security services of Ukraine paid a visit to the deputy head of Odessa region, Oleg Muratov. The official has been caught in giving the $35,000 bribe in order to take out one of his subordinates out of the prison. And then right here, as we go back to Russia, we have an alleged video of Russian people receiving the military summons documents dated for January 6. If you remember from my previous episodes, the Ukrainian authorities were mentioning that Russia will do another round of mobilization on January 5th, which looks like it did not happen, or at least yet. But based on this video, which is still yet to be confirmed whether this is true or not, some Russian men, they did start receiving such documents. And then according to the general staff of Ukraine, Russia already started taking the measures to prevent the Russian men from leaving the country, which basically means closing the borders. This information has also not been yet confirmed by pretty much anyone else, and Russia declined to comment on this situation. So what we have right now, it's either a huge speculation or just a wishful thinking. But in case all of this is true, and there is another wave of a partial mobilization, most likely we will have an escalation on the front lines in the near future. And by the way, I will be talking about all of this in more details very soon. And yes, if you don't want to miss any of these events as soon as they start happening, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. You can also follow me on Instagram and force me to post some stories so I show some activity and you can see how I, I guess, live. <laughs> Alright, and now let me give you a very quick update from the front lines both in the south and in the east. And to begin with, let's go to the south, specifically to Crimean Peninsula. And specifically, we go to this small settlement of Nizhnyhorske, where this last night, Russian air defense system was operational, but looks like it failed. And then, as we move to the south, even more loud noises have been reported in Fjordland Cape. At first, people also thought this was the work of Ukrainians, but later it has been confirmed that a gas tank has exploded. As we move to the north, to the settlement of Radiansk, located in Kherson region, local Ukrainian partisans reported that they were able to destroy a Russian military warehouse containing several S-300 missiles. In addition to that, several dozen Russian soldiers have been lost. Then we refer to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, which claims that Russians continue to rebuild their force presence in Kherson region, as well as building defense structures. And as we move to the east, to Tokmak, today it has been reported that Ukrainians were able to destroy a significant amount of Russian military equipment around this settlement. And now, let me give you the same quick update from the east. 
And first of all, according to the same report, Russians continue their offensive along Svatovy Krimin road in order to regain their lost positions. And the main focus of Ukrainians was to target and destroy the logistics of Russians in this area. In addition to that, the fighting around Bakhmut still goes on, but most likely, like mentioned previously, it sits near its culmination. And speaking about Bakhmut, recently Russians were intensifying their attacks from the south, bringing even more soldiers and equipment to attack Ukrainian positions. And while Ukrainians are actively repelling the majority of these attacks, this continuous battle they pretty much destroy the entire city. And at this very moment, it is estimated that approximately 60% of Bakhmut is destroyed beyond recognition. The majority of Russian attacks recently have been against Belohirivka, Solidar, Krasnohora, Bakhmut, Kurdyumivka and Marinka, and Ukrainians were successful at repelling at least some of them. Because if we take a look at this map, which shows us the changes in territorial control in the last 24 hours, we can see that Russians were predominantly successful across Bakhmut frontline. But as we go a little bit to the north, to Krimina area, we can see that Ukrainians got a little bit closer to the city of Krimina. And then right here, I have a video from Bakhmut itself, which shows several combat activities. But due to still, unfortunately, ongoing demonetization on YouTube, just like with the other previous videos, I had to blur it. For this reason, I uploaded some of the uncensored photos and videos to my Discord, and the rest will be available on my Patreon. And if you want to financially support the channel and access all of this uncensored footage, the links will be down below. And right now, let's talk about something potentially extremely important. Because today, the leader of Wagner, Evgeny Prigozhin, he gave the pardon to the first group of all of the Wagner soldiers. And as you might already know, the majority of Wagner force consists of the prisoners. In the propagandistic video when Prigozhin was talking to his soldiers, he was basically saying, thank you for your service, you can now go home, just behave well and everything will be good. But at the same time, for the last several days, there have been many statements that the Bakhmut offensive from the Russian side is near its culmination. So could this mean that Wagner is pulling out of Bakhmut and Prigozhin is either blackmailing or testing Putin? Just hold on a second, this is just a speculation, but let's go deep into these questions. Because I mean, just think about this. At this point, there is barely any progress for Russians around this city. The military significance of Bakhmut itself is very questionable. Which basically means that at this point, capturing this place is basically just a trophy city, which Russia wants to present to its people as at least some kind of victory. And since Wagner soldiers are pretty much the only ones who make any progress in this area at all, Prigozhin, I am pretty certain, he knows how much Putin depends on him. And if Bakhmut will never be captured, there will be no this victory for Putin to present to his people, he will most certainly lose some of his popularity points among the patriots. And Prigozhin also realizes that right now Putin is extremely weak. And no, I'm not saying that Prigozhin will be a much better replacement for Putin, it is just once again, all of this is just a pure speculation. Because eventually, sooner or later there will be a shift inside the government of Russia, and the sooner you try to grab and reach as high as possible, the more chances you have. Alright, even though it does seem like there is a big stalemate across the entire Ukrainian frontline, recently we started receiving more and more reports about upcoming potential escalation, most likely from the north. And in this video, for example, we can see Russians bringing another batch of their armored personnel carriers to Brest, Belarus. On this map we can see the route that this military convoy had to take, and it basically took almost 3-4 days to cross the entire territory of Belarus. And now, reportedly, all of this military equipment is unloaded right next to the border with Poland. 
And according to Belarusian side, all this is done in order to protect the national interests of the country. And I mean, <laughs> protect from who? Give me at least one sensible reason why would Ukraine want to invade Belarus. And then right here we have another map with the alleged redeployment of Russian nuclear weapons on the territories of both Belarus, Russia and even Crimea. There have even been several reports that Russians brought their radiation and chemical protection forces to Armyansk. The majority of these statements have been originally presented to us by the defense intelligence of Ukraine, and they also claim that they are constantly monitoring the situation, so that there are no surprises. And according to the Ukrainian general Alexander Pavluk, in case Russians are advantageous enough to actually invade from the north, Ukraine is ready for them. According to him, pretty much the entire border, all the way from Lutsk until the east of Kiev region, is heavily guarded. There are mines, snipers, fortifications and defense structures, so it won't be easy for Russians to pass. The majority of these statements are pretty much confirmed by the majority of Ukrainian government authorities, such as for example the Secretary of the National Defense and Security Council, Alexander Danilov. And he claims that Russia is actively looking forward to escalate the situation as early as in February, because Putin simply loves symbolism. But here is my own personal assumption what's about to happen, because I still do not believe that Russia has the capabilities to open the brand new front line. So, what if Russia is assembling all these forces and doing the negotiations with Belarus just to show the world that they have the capabilities to invade from the north? And as soon as everything is ready for this invasion, the Russian government representatives will start traveling across European and Western countries and saying that if you don't want us to invade, here is what we have to propose. The main position of Russians will be to blackmail the Western world to force Zelensky to negotiate for some kind of peace. Because as you already know, Zelensky or any other Ukrainian authorities are definitely not going to talk with Russia anymore. And that is why it is pretty much the last hope of Russia to make somebody else force Zelensky for negotiations because it is Russians who need peace way more than Ukrainians. And at the same time, Ukraine is no longer planning to just sit and watch, because right now Ukraine has the leverage as well. And according to Peter Dickinson, Ukraine is also assembling forces for the ultimate counteroffensive as early as this winter. He says that right now Ukraine has to keep the momentum the same they had when they liberated Kharkov region and a part of Kherson region and potentially the next major direction of Ukrainian retaking their own lands will be closer to Azov Sea, most likely against Berdyansk and Militopol. And most likely, according to Mr. Dickinson, one of the main reasons for this specific direction is to disrupt the logistics of Russians between the East and the South. And so yeah, Russia needs any break possible at this very moment, so they can resupply and regroup themselves in order to launch more offensive. That is why we see this stalemate in the East, and specifically in the South, and more recently the Patriarch of Moscow, Kirill, he offered a ceasefire during Christmas holidays. His initial proposal was to not have any combat activities from the noon of January 6th until the midnight of January 7th. And later on, this proposal was passed along to the Russian side, specifically to Putin, as well as Ukrainians. The main idea of the Russian side is that both regular Russians and Ukrainians can celebrate the Orthodox Christmas in peace. But in reality, it's not even close to that. Because soon enough after the initial proposal, the Minister of Defense of Russia, Sergei Shoigu, ordered by Putin, he did enforce the ceasefire in these specific times. Which most likely means, knowing the tactics of the Russian leadership, that there will be provocations presented as they were did by Ukrainians. 
And before you even know it, Russia already released the statement that Ukrainians are planning to destroy several churches in Donetsk region exactly during the Christmas mass. So pretty much yes, their military tactics have already been proven to be barbaric, senseless and uncaring. And if you are living in these areas, please be extremely careful. And then the reaction of Russian Z patriots, some government officials, such as Denis Pushilin, the head of Donetsk region, was pretty aggressive. What they were basically saying is that why do we need to give Ukrainians time to regroup and resupply themselves? We are successful right now, that is why we need to push now more than ever. And yeah, even if such people as Denis Pushilin can openly criticize Putin, most certainly the fear of the president of Russia decreased significantly, including inside Russia. And so yeah, as you can see, unfortunately, some provocations are being prepared, and there are very big estimations of the escalation in the next month or two. And if you don't want to miss any of these events as soon as they start happening, just please, once again, subscribe to my channel. It only takes one click. And if you want to support my work financially, please consider becoming my channel member, use a PayPal link or become my Patreon, where you receive early access to the additional content. You can find all the other useful links to the right and down below. Thank you so much for your attention, товарищи, and see you tomorrow.